Hey guys, it's Kyle here with Learn Baker Acres. On today's video, we're going to be making one of these. Um, if you guys don't know what it is, it's a five frame nuke, or short for nucleus colony. All it basically is, is a small, self contained hive for starting new colonies, catching swarms. Um, there's a lot of great uses for them. I've, I've often said this, I think that the nuke is one of the most valuable pieces of equipment that a beekeeper can have. No matter what size you want your apiary to be, it's handy to have a nuke on hand, ready to go. Again, in case of a swarm, in case you have a hive that is, is ready to swarm right away, this is an easy way to make a small split is using a, a small nuke like this. Um, they're light, pretty lightweight. You can throw them in your vehicle and just have one in there at all times in case you happen to be driving by a swarm. They're just a great piece of equipment to have and they're far too simple to build for you to end up having to buy one. Um, some of these go for well over $100 when you buy them. I can make this with material included for about five bucks. That's not, not frames included, but just for the material involved with this, for about five bucks for one of these. So I'm gonna get ready to show you exactly how to build one of those coming up right now. Alright guys, so let's let's take a closer look at what this five frame nuke is. It's pretty simple. Alright, we have our, our top cover, our lid, whatever. The box is in the inside. We have frame rests right here, which double as handles. Pretty handy, right? We have our front with our entrance disc right here. Obviously the entrance, the hole, right there. We have a small landing board area right there. Pretty simple guys. So you can actually build four of these from one sheet of OSB board. Now, a note on that OSB board. Um, a lot of people have issues with building outdoor objects using OSB board. They think it's not going to last. I will tell you that some of these nukes that I have are about three years old and they're doing fine. If you use good quality glue, and use good quality outdoor paint and you repaint them every once in a while, like maybe once a year, there's no reason this uh, OSB nuke should not last for a very long time. Honestly, and even if it only lasts for a year, it's worth it in the long run because of the very minimal cost involved. You can build, again, four of these out of one four by eight sheet of OSB board, okay? I'm going to have a link in my description for a full write-up how-to on how to do this. So it's a good way to follow along is with that write-up. Again, the link is in the description, so make sure you check that out. Okay, so we started off with one 4x8 sheet OSB board, um, about half inch. I think it's 7 sixteenths is what I use. Um, you can also use 23, 30 seconds. The measurements aren't off too much for that. So, and then what you do is you take that sheet, that four by eight sheet of OSB board, wherever you buy it from, either the blue store or the orange store, you will cut it out into two 22 inch strips. And what's gonna be flash on the screen, it's kind of a cut list here. What you're looking at right here on the screen is the overall cut list. And again, this is on that um, link that I shared in the description. You'll see an image there, so it's easier to follow along. But you see those 22 inch sections, you cut it down into those four 22 inch sections and then you're left with about a six inch strip as well. You take all those um, and either the blue store or the orange store, they will cut it for you. It makes it way easier. So uh, it's less cutting that you have to do and it's easier to handle, okay? So once you have those sections cut, okay? Um, I've got the four 22 inch sections plus the one about six inch section here. There are some tools that you will need. You will need either a circular saw, if that's all you have, but preferably a table saw to make the rest of your cuts. Uh, it's just a lot easier, especially since you're going to probably be building four of these at once anyway, since that's what one 4x8 sheet of OSB board builds is for. 
it's a lot easier just to kind of mass produce and that's what we're going to do today is mass produce four but i'm going to focus on the assembly of just one of them okay another thing that you'll need is a seven eight, seven eighths inch spade bit and again all this information is on the website okay in case you forget um, you can always reference that website but again a uh, seven eighths inch spade bit for drilling the entrance hole because of that you will need an entrance disc i will have a link to those in my description on where you can find them via Amazon. You can also get them through Man Lake, Dayton, Better Be, a lot of different places that have them. But I'll have a link to the, the Amazon uh, ones that I normally get um, because they're pretty reasonably priced. Just an entrance disc. Obviously you'll need some sort of measuring device, i.e. tape measure, yardstick, something like that. You will also need a drill for using 7 8 spade bit to drill your entrance and if you decide to use screws to assemble it you'll obviously need um, a Phillips head and probably a small drill bit for pre-drill uh, for pre-drilling the holes and the uh, screws of your choice however to assemble it I actually use an air nailer um, a brad nailer and like one inch small brads that's what a lot of people say is not nearly enough support, uh, especially an OSB board, just to use brads. But I think the key to success is that I use quality wood glue. The type of wood glue that I prefer to use is this Tight Bond 2. Again, link in the description on exactly what it is. This is what I prefer to use, and I've had really good luck with it. My opinion is with these low stress nuke boxes they're not going to be under a whole lot of stress honestly it's not like these hives are going to be super heavy um, the screws nails whatever you use to assemble them are really just kind of temporary just to hold them together until this really good quality wood glue does its job and creates um, the actual seal to it okay so and that's about all the tools that you'll need Obviously safety equipment, some sort of glasses if you want, hearing protection, gloves, things like that. So use caution. This build involves power tools. Make sure you know what you're doing. Um, you can always contact a friend that has power tools if, if you feel more comfortable having them help you with this pro product, this project, I'm sorry. So let's jump right into it. Alright, now that we're all set up, the very first thing that we're going to do is, again, we're, we're going off these 22 set. 22 inch sections that we've already cut okay that's the assumption that I'm making that we've already cut these 22 inch sections with that leftover about six inch piece so the very first ones that we are going to cut out are the tops and again if you reference uh, that photo I have on my website where I screenshot it of the cut list the tops are nine inches wide so we're going to set we're either going to Mark the pieces at nine inches and use our circular saw, or like I said, I prefer using a table saw. We're gonna set it to nine inches on the inside of the blade to account for the curve or the, the cut from the blade width. So we're right at nine inches. Pretty simple stuff. All we're going to do is run through every single one of these boards nine inches to cut a top from each one. One top from each one. That's all we're going to do. simple right guys we're just going to follow along this cut list cutting what the cut list requires okay 
You notice that on this cut list, I'm going to flash the uh, diagram back up here. On the cut list, you'll see the first section, they're labeled by letters. Pretty simple to follow along. Top is A, B is bottom. We have two sides that are C, a front and back that are D, and handles, which is also the frame rest, frame rest caps. Um, we have two of those at E, and then on the far right side of it is our top end caps, and that just makes up the, I'll show you right here, the small section on the top, on the lid, if you want to call it that. And this prevents the lid from sliding around once it's on there. So one thing I do need to go over is on my website, um, pretty much the same build, but I'm adding some extra features to it, like a spot for, an in, for a, a jar feeder, okay? Also some extra features, if you want to call it that, that I add to it is some ventilation ports in the bottom. That's all extras that we're gonna do, uh, that I only have listed on my website. They're pretty self-explanatory, so I don't really feel like it's necessary to show you how to do that in the video, but it just involves a three inch hole saw and some eight inch hardware cloth and a stapler of some sort. But they're pretty simple to make. I like them a lot. Use your own judgment on whether or not you want to add that to your news. So now we are going to just go through the rest of the cut list, cutting each of the desired pieces to create a small pile of parts. So let's get through that right now. got them all cut except for the top end caps, uh, which again is just those cleats that go on the on either end of the top. Um, I've got them cut to width, but to cut them to length, I like to use my uh, my um, miter saw, basically, um, and that's just easier for me. You can still use table saw, circular saw, whatever you want to use to cut them to length, but I prefer to use my miter saw. It's just easier like a chop saw um, to mass produce. And so I'm going to get that set up and we'll be done in just a second. Alright guys, so all the pieces are cut now. Now it's just a matter of assembly. We got ourselves a whole mess of uh, pieces going. I know what I'm doing. Sure. Um, anyway, so yeah, I've got a pile of, pile of uh, pieces here that I'm going to show you once I get set up for the next step. How to assemble. It's pretty simple. It's pretty fast from here. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Alright guys, we are all set up. Um, I actually had to move my little workstation a little closer because I forgot my air hose doesn't quite reach as far as I was working. So I had to move it a little bit closer. Um, so we've got all of our pieces laid out here on the tailgate in the background. Just trying to clear this uh, old dried glue. And it's pretty simple. We're gonna glue and air nail. Again, I use air nails, uh, and it, or sorry, an air nailer, and I'm using like one and a half inch brads. Is that gonna be enough to hold? It has been for me. Um, so use your own judgment on that. Like I said, you can pre-drill some holes and use some one inch screws if you wanted. 
um, or three quarter inch screws would probably work just fine as well. My only issue with using screws is one, it takes longer. So that's a big thing. Is, um, I'm a pretty busy guy, so I don't have time to take a real long time on projects sometimes. So another thing is I'm always worried about if I'm not pre-drilling enough, is it gonna split this OSB board? And I've had those issues in the past. First couple of nukes I built, I used screws and I had some areas where the OSB was starting to split because of the width of the screw. Um, and again, some of my nukes are about three years old with the one and a half inch brads in them. I haven't seen any issues with it. However, I am in Arizona, so that probably does make a difference. We got a pretty dry climate. Um, they don't get rained on a whole bunch, but they are stored outside all year round. So, like I said, use your own judgment. So first thing we need are the two sides and the front and back. Now, I think it's important to note orientation of things. So I'm gonna bring this nuke over here for reference. So again, our, our front and back, I'm gonna bring the sheet over, reference as well. Our front and back are seven and a half by nine and a half, right? So we want to make sure that we have these pieces laid out in the correct orientation when we're attaching them together. Basically, this first step that we're going to do is attach the front, or I'm sorry, yeah, the front and back to the two sides. The front and back are going to be on the inside of the two sides. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. This is the end of these pieces of wood right here. Okay, so the front and back is going to be on the inside. We're going to have the front and back in height orientation. What I mean by that is it's going to be the seven and a half inches by uh, across this way and nine and a half across this way. Okay, so um, it's going to be more narrow vertically. Okay, is that if hopefully that's making sense here. So we want to make sure that we have the correct orientation when we do. That. So my little workbench here, uh, this is actually given to my dad by his dad kind of thing and passed down to me. It's a real nothing little workbench, but what I love about it is that it clamps together. Um, it adjusts for size and I use that as a clamp per se, which makes this job a lot easier. Another thing to speak on with this OSB board is I don't even know if I'm cutting off my head here. Sorry, guys. Um, so, there we go. Which side do you put on the outside? The rough texture side or the smooth texture side? I think, again, that's personal preference. Um, some people would say put the rough texture on the outside because that's the non-sealed side and you're going to want to paint it. Since you're not going to be painting the inside, you're going to want to paint the outside, which is the rough textured side. But I'll be honest, painting the rough textured side of OSB is not the easiest. It's certainly not quick. So I always put the smooth side on the outside of my nuke. And that allows me to paint the smooth side. It makes it a lot faster. Coats go down quicker, even more even. And again, I haven't had issues, but use your own job. So, so again, we're going to we have seven and a half across this way, nine and a half across this way. We want our nuke to be that nine and a half tall, basically. So I'm gonna orient my board. Um, again, this, I, I love this little workbench for this. You guys can see it's pretty dilapidated by now because I use it so much. So that way you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna clamp it down here. I'm going to run a nice thing of glue, nice strip of glue down it. Again, it's always been my opinion that um, the nails or screws are just for temporary securing, really, and the glue does most of the work while holding it together. So once we have our side, we're actually going to 
match it up to the bottom. Meaning that we're not going to try and, because this side is going to be taller than the front and back, we're going to match up to just one side or another. And whatever side we even it up with, that's going to be the, the bottom of the nuke. And that'll make sense in a moment. Let's see here. Running out of hose here. So, I just kind of use my body to kind of hold it in place, making sure it's even all the way around. And of course, that's embarrassing. Then we'll edit that out. So again, I'm going to make sure it's even all the way around. lined up properly. Okay, now it's kind of held in place. I can. And about five does it really, honestly, is that's that's my opinion of it. Um, about five of them does it. So that's what we have. Again, it's gonna be flush with just the bottom. What happens is this becomes the frame rest, this gap, because we're gonna have an end cap here. This becomes the frame rest. So if hopefully it's starting to make sense here. Again, I've chosen to use the smooth texture portion of the OSB on the outside. Makes for easier painting, but that's up to you. Again, another line of wood glue. Okay, ready to close it off? Sure did. Now, keep in mind that we're going to want to keep it flush on the same side. Since it's flush on this side, we're going to want it to be flush on this side. The same side, and again, keeping whatever desired texture on the outside as we already have, okay? So I'm just using my leg here to kind of support the heavy end, if you want to call it that. Making sure everything lines up properly. Starts to get far more easy for the most part. So we're gonna do another strip of glue, another strip of glue. Boom, boom. Now this can be challenging to get them both to line up at the same time because sometimes it's gonna be just a little wonky. Uh, technical term, wonky. Um, so. What I try and do is just do some pre-bending a little bit. There you go. And that's not going to be perfect, but it will be in a moment. Again, lining up the flush side on the same side as before, okay? The reason why I'm reiterating that so much is accidents happen and when you're not paying attention you end up with a box with uh, two opposite sides basically that won't line up properly which makes for kind of uh, interesting firewood is about all it's good for at that point. So there's that side. Now is when we can line up this side. Everything's flush.
now we are at the point where we can attach the bottom. So the bottom again is the eight and a half by 20 piece. So remember on the nuke, on the bottom, it also encompassed um, a, a landing board, right? Um, just that front little porch area as like a little landing board. And we want to keep that in mind when we're placing this on here as well. So again, nice, good strip of glue. So, it doesn't really matter which side is which, um, just whatever side that you put the excess material on, like the landing board, that's going to be obviously your front. So we're going to just line this up the best as we can, and it should be pretty square, should be being the key word. If it's not perfectly square, this is when it will be. This is when you're going to force it into being square because your bottom board should be fairly square. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run nails down this one side, down the back side of it first. Sometimes the nails do pop out, that's okay, I will trim them off later. Now, when we can force it into square. So, a note while nailing this side, obviously you want to line up with the board right here. But don't put one, uh, either a nail or a screw, directly in the middle. Your entrance is going to go there at the bottom of the front, right? So you don't want any nails or screws directly in this middle section, okay? So keep that in mind. Again, I really only ever do just not very many. On the bottoms, I do a few extra, just because there's a lot more real estate there. But. And really on the front section, again, being mindful that you're gonna have an entrance hole somewhere. You only really need, you know, just a, a couple. And that is it for the bottom section of the nuke, right? We're gonna let that dry um, while we work on the rest of it, okay? The rest being, we gotta make sure that we put the handles on. I'm sorry, we we're almost done with this. So, the handles, will go in this orientation, right? Okay. Not only the handles, but they will double as the frame rest caps, if you want to call them that. Um, so, again, just a decent amount of glue wherever you think this handle is going to be contacting. Um, if you're going to use extra glue anywhere, this is probably the place to do it because the handles are probably going to be under the most stress compared to anything else, any other part of the nuke at this point. The handles are probably going to receive the most stress. But again, it's not like these nukes are ever going to be real heavy. So you don't have to worry about it too much. So you're going to line it up flush with the top, pinch it in place, and put nails down each end of it. About three will do. Three on that side, three on this side. And one end cap. Now I've noticed that when I'm uh, putting this on because of this front porch area, the landing board, whatever you want to call it, um, if I put the same side as, as that, put that hand, handle on first, 
it makes it a little easier once you flip it over to balance. There's not as much of a difference in, in levelness or height, whatever you want to call it there. So again, and so see I've got a nail sticking out here, not a huge issue. I will use some wire cutters and remove that later. I added an extra nail in that area so that happened. Not a huge deal. So I'm just putting a decent amount of glue right here. Grabbing my air nailer. So now you have the box itself for the most part assembled. Okay? All that is left is for us to assemble the top. Like this time, there we go. Our little end caps here. The top is pretty simple. However, I like to switch to a shorter brad nail once I get to this point because you're only going through the uh, thickness of two sheets of OSB, um, which is about an inch at that point. Um, and so these inch and a half brads will obviously go through. So I'm just gonna switch to these, I think they're three quarter. No, they're one inch, one inch brads. So they might, just because of pressure, poke through just a tad, not a huge deal. So yeah, these, these nukes are not going to win any carpentry contests. Um, if you By now, you've probably noticed that these are similar to other people's nukes. They, I mean, they're all, um, I don't know who created the cut lists. There's lots of various cut lists. That's what I found to be the most useful. But the dimensions are, for the most part, going to be the same across the internet on where you find your nuke. A five-frame nuke is probably going to be the same size across the board uh, because we're working with standard Langstroth dimensions here. So it's not groundbreaking science. Um, I don't think that we're necessarily stealing from each other. We're just using what Dr. Langstroth used as far as you know the concept of B space and going off of five frames and then optimizing the cuts that we make to uh, best use our material at hand. So these end caps and cleats as some people call them, their whole purpose is to prevent the top from flying off during the wind. It kind of helps secure it a little better. I won't say that's perfect but it does work pretty decent. Um, I've found that if I just throw a couple bricks on top we're good to go. It's not going to come off in the wind. So again about Five brads there, lining it up. Oh, something I should mention, the orientation of these end caps. Remember on the cut sheet, you, you cut them at three quarter inch width. That's three quarters inch this way, okay? Because um, obviously they're only gonna be as thick as material you use, which is about a half inch, um, either 7 16 or 23 30 seconds, I think. Uh, but anyway, so you want that three quarters of an inch to go in this orientation, okay? And from there, we should, should be the keyword. Boom, look at that. So there we go, we have a lid that fits. We have one step left. For the most part, well, I won't say one step, but one major step, at least in this video. And that is to the Now, 
I like to have my entrance discs on these. It just makes them makes it a lot easier to transport nukes. You can just um, tape the lids on and close entrance discs, and I, I love it. You know, it makes it real simple. Um, you don't have to have an entrance disc though. Um, if you're going to use an entrance disc, I suggest that you mock it up, place it in there, because you want to account for the thickness of the bottom of the entrance disc. Getting it as close to the landing board as possible, keeping in mind that your, your landing board is the front, okay? And then I'm going to just simply kind of poke down to kind of pre-mark it. And it's as simple as drilling a hole with this 7, in, seven eighths inch spade bit, okay? I try and go at an upward angle a little bit towards this way. Um, that creates a, a little bit of a slant on the hole that you're going to drill um, to kind of help prevent water from splashing in. I don't know that it actually helps, but I feel better about it. that I didn't really force it um, and it, it did it anyway but OSB likes to chip quite a bit when you're using a spade bit it just it loves to chip quite a bit not detrimental to the situation but um, I'd prefer not to have chips if I don't have to and if you go a little slower than I did probably um, as far as a decent speed on the drill but not pressing very hard uh, then you should be good so what do we have left to do? Well, if you're following along on a website, then you'll notice that there's a few extra steps. And again, all that's for is for cutting a hole in the lid, adding um, one eighth inch hardware cloth, and that's for a uh, feeder jar. And that fits a standard small mouth mason jar lid. And I did that for a reason. I can buy a whole case of mason jars with lids for real cheap compared to buying actual bee feeder jars and then I just poke holes in the lids of the mason jar that works just fine a note on that when selecting a location for your feeder jar I prefer to have them in the back a couple of reasons one those feeder jars are probably going to drip at some point what that means is that it's going to drip down on the brood nest you want to keep the, that dripping away from the brood nest as much as possible so you don't chill the brood two I've got it in the rear, away from the entrance. Um, that dripping is going to be to the rear, again, away from the entrance, which will kind of help prevent robbing a little bit. Um, it won't necessarily prevent robbing, but it won't draw in robber bees to have the sugar syrup on the bottom real close to the entrance. So that's one note on it. Um, the other thing that you might see on my website is three ports basically drilled in here with some screen mesh. Keep in mind the screen mesh is on the inside. Uh, that's just for extra ventilation, something I'm trying out. And then what I normally do also, I don't even know if this part's on the website, I'll drill real small holes all along, all four sides along the top basically, to allow the heat to escape through the top. Um, I'm not sure if it's super helpful, but I'm giving it a shot this year. So, so if you don't want to do that step, your next step now is obviously to paint it. As far as what type of paint, just use any good or outdoor paint that you might find in the oops section of your uh, orange or blue store. Just make sure it's light colored, especially here in Arizona. Um, that's so important to have a really light colored paint, a tan, a white, a beige, eggshell, whatever the terminology you want to use. Just any kind of really light colored paint. I've used light blue before, light gray, um, just any light colored paint. But try and make sure that it's outdoor paint and that will help this nuke last a long time. Once you have it painted, it's simply a matter of screwing on your entrance disc and you're done. Um, so the whole time of this build, I've been able to do it in, um, not including dry time, it's just work time. Um, but I can get to this point obviously and I now I need to let it dry before I paint it. You probably could paint it at this level, but I prefer to let it dry. But not including dry time for dry time for the glue or dry time for the paint. I can build the four of them in about an hour um, is what it takes me. Um, 
I don't build them often enough that I always have to kind of think about it, plan it out each time that I do it. So I build these just, you know, once or twice a year. I build uh, about eight or 12 of them once or twice a year. So if you guys have any questions about this build, make sure that you comment below. Um, also, make sure that you check us out on Facebook. We're always adding more information resources on our Facebook page, which is Hornbaker Acres LLC on Facebook. Again, I'm going to have a link to our website in our description, um, but our website, which is www.hornbakeracres.com, it's got tons of resources like this build today. We've got other simple builds on there. We've got various articles. It's very informative about various aspects of beekeeping. We also talk about our live bee rescue um, on our website. So if you're in the West Valley and, and you have a honeybee issue and you need it removed, make sure you contact us through um, our Facebook page, our email address, all that good stuff. It's going to be on our website. Okay, guys? Um, make sure you share these videos. Uh, I want to make sure that new beekeepers have as best a start as they can. And this is one way to have a best start, just to have one of these nukes around because you just never know when you're going to catch a swarm. As I always say, guys, truly appreciate all the love, kindness, the support, and support that you show us here on our YouTube page and our Facebook page. God bless, guys. Happy meeting.